All right, how's it going, y'all? So I have in front of me a whole lot of to-do list items I've had to upgrading my office network, and we're finally getting here today. Today, we're going through and massively overhauling my entire office network with a bunch of unified stuff that I've been meaning to get set up and running, all the way from phones, back of internet, and to some insanely fast PoE plus, 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 10 gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi. And so I finally got a free Saturday, and so I can take everything down and start upgrading everything. There is a very slight lie in this picture because what is currently standing in for my UDM Pro Max is actually, as you might notice, a UDM Pro. That's because I actually already went ahead and did that upgrade last weekend, and it went beautifully. I'll get back to that in a second. But the rest of this we are going to be installing today, and you will likely be seeing some tutorials on some of these great things as well, especially I've already filmed one in phones, and maybe even the LTE backup, which is something I've been really needing to do, and I recommend a lot of people add for themselves. Okay, so this whole upgrade is really centered on mostly two things. One, this switch at the bottom right here is going to unlock the ability for me to do a lot of things I could not have done before because this thing is a new PoE Pro XG24. This is able to have PoE++, which is I think almost 100 watts per port at 10 gigabit. And this Wi-Fi access point actually requires 10 gigabit PoE++ access. It is the new accompanying Pro XGS that pairs beautifully with this, and so I'm very excited to go over that. So the really nice thing, and the reason I'm upgrading the switch is that PoE++. So I've already got a 10 gigabit switch in there, it's the Pro XG, and it's already got the 25 gigabit hookup. Same thing this guy has right here. And I'm actually gonna be using it in the exact same way. The problem is, now all my ports either have 10 gigabit or PoE. And I'm lucky enough to be able to have both now. And so I don't have to choose between my two switches all the time and keep going back in the networking closet and keep changing over ports when I need to test up with PoE versus when I need to test up with really fast networking throughput. This guy right here can do it all. And even better, now my Wi-Fi access point is going to have a 10 gigabit uplink with PoE++. That's what this thing takes. It is their new Unify Wi-Fi 7, and I've been waiting to unbox it because they're a really cool new design. I've been running one of these at my house for a long time, and it's unbelievably fast. But here we can see they have a very new setup. They're much more like a flying saucer, and they're a good, hefty thing. These do get a little warm, but I've never had any actual issues with it. And the port on the bottom right there, you will read it correctly, that is a PoE++ 10 gigabit port. So we are going to be able to use this switch to actually power this thing and do a little bit of testing with it. Though quite honestly, even with my entire setup at my place, I'm not gonna be able to test one tenth of what this thing can actually do. Did you know that you or I could go to any data broker's website today and buy anyone's personal data? It's on us to protect our personal data, and that's why I use today's sponsor, Aura. Aura keeps you safe online by doing all the hard work for you. Aura monitors data brokers who are selling your personal information and submits opt-out requests on your behalf. This will then keep your personal information off these sites, which will help protect you from identity theft, scams, and even spam. One of my favorite parts of using Aura is the massive reduction in spam calls that I used to get. Aura will also continuously monitor the dark web and alert you if they find your personal information. They even have a credit monitoring tool and will alert you if anybody tries to access your credit or your bank accounts. Plus, they give you up to $5 million in identity theft insurance should the worst case happen. Aura is easy to set up and use, and it provides all these services and more, including a password manager, VPN, and antivirus, all included at one low price. Stop leaving yourself vulnerable to data breaches and brokers. Check out my link in the description below, aura.com slash spacerex, to get a free 14-day trial and see if any of your personal information has been exposed. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring this section of the video. Now back to the video. Finally, two additional things have been great. I've been needing to get an office number, a business number, and we are setting up a unified talk. I've had a lot of clients who really love it. It's a great price point and it works really nicely integrated into our environment. I've already got that set up for a couple of them, but once again, now we're gonna be able to use those PoE++ ports. 
And we are also getting backup LTE cellular for 15 bucks a month. So this guy right here is the Unify LTE backup. There's two versions, there's a pro and a regular. This is the regular. This essentially gives me the ability to have this be my backup internet. So Unify has a plan for 15 bucks a month, it will be backup internet. And so essentially what it does is you just power it anywhere on one of your switches via PoE, and it is able to fail over to it. So if your internet goes out, you just have a seamless transition to this. So if I'm on a call and AT&T cuts the wrong line, my internet does not drop. This is especially useful for extended outages. Realistically, a five minute drop is not the biggest deal, but especially if you're running business, which we are, you kind of need a way to be able to make sure that if there is something crazy happens, say AT&T does cut that line, it can take five or six days to get that stuff repaired. And I've had clients who just have not been able to have employees work effectively for three or four days waiting for their internet to get fixed. And this is not even just in like rural America, this was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and that exact story happened. Somebody accidentally cut a fiber line that AT&T owned, and they were not able to get it repaired for I think four days. Having something like this really comes in handy for that kind of thing. So the price point's pretty good. It's 15 bucks a month for the first gig. So basically, if you don't use it, it's 15 bucks a month. And then it's $10 per gigabyte after that, which is a little steep, but given the fact that it's really set up for redundancy and just, hey, if you need it, it's pretty well priced. And if you are in the case where you are failing over to this, you're probably gonna be pretty happy to pay that. And so they work really well. Unfortunately, you cannot use this as a primary internet. I have had to do that a couple times for some people and you can set up at home and bring it over, but I do wish they had just a way you can natively do it as your primary internet. And so that's the list of stuff we're upgrading today. As I said, I already cheated and I already upgraded the UDM Pro Max. And I wanna tell you, it was a dream. This was my first just like drop in replacement for a router. And this has been my old tried and true UDM Pro that I bought way before Space Rex and it has run great. Honestly, I could have kept running off this thing no problems whatsoever. It is a phenomenal piece of equipment and I think probably one of the best values in the routing space at all. But now, as you can tell, I'm running a whole lot more Unify equipment and even my security cameras record directly to this. So because of that, I really wanted to upgrade to the Pro Max. It's got a good amount more horsepower under the hood to do more complex tasks. And as I'm adding in the phones and everything, it really is going to be a lot more useful. And I am going to get much better inter VLAN routing speeds because that has just that much faster of a CPU. I don't tend to route really high traffic through the actual firewall. For all my 10 gigabit stuff that's actually trying to communicate 10 gigabit, it's all on layer two networks, so you're not routing through the firewall, but having that extra overhead is very nice, and especially upgrading to CyberProtect and having more rule sets on there, the UDM Pro Max just handles it better. The upgrade process was insanely easy. I did it last Saturday. I had a consulting call in 40 minutes. I was like, eh, I'm gonna upgrade my router. I got a second. I took a backup of it. I then swapped it out and restored that backup. And it did take about maybe 10 minutes to update, bring over my settings and everything. But from the moment I decided to do it till it was done was less than 25 minutes. And that includes unscrewing stuff, taking the backup and restoring it. I cannot express how easy that was and how everything just came over. So I was super happy with that. I should not have done it directly before a consulting call, but it worked out just fine. I had 15 minutes to spare. And after that, everything just came right back on over. The restore process was phenomenally easy, even though it is what runs the entire network. So I was very, very, very impressed by that. And by far, switching out your router is the hardest thing because it's your controller. When we switch out this guy right here, this new switch, it's going to be easy because there's just going to be a simple button that says change. And so we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go in, we're going to put this thing in my networking closet, and there is a great replace option in there that'll just pull over all the configs and we won't have to do anything. 
Plus, because this is just a client switch, so I don't use this as the backbone for my network. It's in my networking closet that goes out to the rest of the network. I don't have to shut any VMs down or anything, and NFS will stay up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now, and we're gonna swap her on out. All right, so now that is finally done. It took a lot longer than it should have, but I have no one to blame but myself. I unfortunately got confused as to which my two fiber optic uplinks were for the 10 gig and the 25 gigabit switches. So I ended up having them plugged in backwards. Basically, I had a 25 gigabit module hooked up to into a SFP plus module and a 10 gigabit module hooked up into a 25 gigabit module. And the problem was I had set those so they would not auto negotiate. And so I'm sitting there bashing my head in thinking that there's something wrong with my switch rebooted it, all these things. And I realized, oh wait, maybe we should just act that. Switch them around, everything came back up immediately. So what I had to do there was I essentially just had to swap out the switch itself. I was a little worried about the length of it and making sure the depth would work out fine, but it totally was fine, so that is great. Then one other annoying thing I did have to do is I did have to move all of my ports about eight rungs over. So. I previously had this setup where all my fastest ports were on the far left. However, with the switch I've got, only 16 of the ports are 10 gigabit. Eight of them are 2.5 gigabit. And the problem is, it's the eight ones on the far left. Now that's always how Unify does it. They are consistent with that. But if you're like me, maybe you should start thinking about starting your ports at the right rather than from the left. And so that way you always have, you can take advantage of the faster speeds. So that is what I had to do there and just clean some other things on up. The other thing I also did was I was going to switch out this Wi-Fi access point and I thought they had the exact same base plate. So I was thought I was just gonna be up on the ceiling two seconds, swap them. Turns out they've got two different base plates, but I do currently have this XG that we're going to go ahead and play around with. So now we're back in my Unify, and the first thing we need to go ahead and do is swap out this Enterprise XG24 with this Pro XG24. And that is as easy as this guy right here with Select Replacement Device. Now, the really cool part about this is, if you saw there, I could have actually typed in a MAC address if I wanted to. So I actually could have done this from my computer right here and sent off to a client's site. And as soon as they switch it over, it would have swapped without me having to do anything with, I think it's pretty cool. But now what it's gonna do is it's going to pull over any custom configurations. So if I have profile specific ports, so I've got different throughput limitations on different ports, it would just pull that stuff right on over, which is great. In this case, it's gonna be pretty quick and easy, so we don't have too much there to worry about, but it will go ahead and pull on over. And now we'll go ahead and adopt this Pro XGS as well. So while that's adopting, I do want it to sink in how crazy that Pro XG24 PoE switch is. PoE++++, not actually a real thing by IEEE, it's basically just the next version of PoE, has 100 watts of power delivery and 10 gigabit. One product I would absolutely love to see is a 10 gigabit dongle that also doubled as being able to give you actually the full like 90 watts of PoE power that that can deliver. Now, I think that is a very hard to do in a cost-effective manner. And there's not a lot of people who really wish they could be charging their laptop while also pulling full 100 watts of PoE power down. I think that would be absolutely awesome. Unify does now make one that is for just PoE Plus, I believe, and it's only one gigabit. But I'd love to see that product come out because personally, I would absolutely love to have that setup. And I think it would make a lot of more simplified deployments though you're not going to have your entire office staff pulling 100 watts off of the switch because even though it's got a huge power bank of 720 watts 
you have seven people doing that at full tilt, you're gonna start running into PoE problems because that is how much 100 watts is. So maybe that's not the best option, but for my particular use case, I think that would be absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, while we're at it, I should also mention I am actually trying their new 10 gigabit adapter and it seems to be working really well. It is a lot smaller profile than my old OWC 10 gigabit Thunderbolt ethernet adapter. And so far I've not had any issues with it. I will be updating y'all if I do, but it's in a lot smaller of a form factor and at a really great price point. And so far it's actually worked really well for me. All right, so now that has finally gone ahead and adopted on in and we can see it right on in here. And this is how I use this setup. I have a phenomenal setup that's absolutely overkill for what I need, but essentially I have a 25 gigabit uplink from the Pro XG24 PoE, previously was my other 10 gigabit switch, and it's a 25 gigabit hookup. So that gives you me just pretty much infinite bottleneck for anything we're doing between that switch that actually kind of goes to the distribution, to the Mac minis, to all the other fast devices on my network that need 10 gig hookups, and my core switch that has 25 gigabit uplinks to my file servers. So because of that, we don't run into any kind of bottlenecks anytime soon with actually being able to transfer bulk files around. And to confirm, I can go ahead and just pull a big old file on into my downloads folder. And we are sticky right at 1.15 gigabytes per second, which is quite nice. So fully and completely saturating that 10 gigabit connection hooked up to my computer right now without a care in the world. So we absolutely know that everything is looking good here. So now we can also see on here, we have the 10 gigabit hookup to the U7 Pro XGS that I've got right here. And I wanna go ahead and just test that on out. All right, so now we are hooked up with six gigahertz on my Wi-Fi spectrum right here. And let's just go ahead and see if we can see any kind of throughput here. So we are getting about 1.4, 1.5 gigabits of actual throughput between the two for off of a single client. Being a smartphone as well, laptop unfortunately does not have Wi-Fi 6E, so we don't get the full-blown thing. But those are some pretty massive numbers for a single device. It's not actually that unfeasible considering how this has eight streams and I believe my phone only has two streams to actually need more than a 2.5 gigabit hookup on the back of a Wi-Fi access point. That being said, it's pretty unlikely for most people to really saturate that except in very large, very condensed environments. And that is what this thing is built to do. It can pull a whole lot of power and really is able to actually follow up on it. You're not gonna be saturating that 10 gigabit hookup on the back of it, but quite honestly, I bet you could probably saturate a 2.5 gigabit connection, which is absolutely nuts. Wi-Fi has gotten very fast with the six gigahertz spectra. If you are really, really, really close, if you're in the same room as the device, it can be unbelievably fast. Six gigahertz falls off very quickly is the one thing. And so it only makes sense in a high throughput environment where you've actually got that kind of really local stuff. Otherwise, it's just not worth it for the most part. All right, so that is the testing and now our switch is finally hooked up and we're getting PoE ports across everything. I still have to go ahead and ceiling mount this thing, but I'm gonna have to end the video there. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you wanna hire me, there's a link for that in the description below as well. And have a good one, bye.